Hey everyone, it's Ross, and today we're going to be doing some root pruning. We're also going to be doing some pruning as well, because when you root prune, uh, you need to have a nice balance between the bottom and the top. So, the, you know, that's the first lesson of root pruning. Um, the reason why we're doing root pruning now, because it's the fall, uh, you can either do this in the fall or the spring. You know, when things go dormant, ideally this tree should be completely dormant, but I'm running out of days here, uh, running out of time. I need to get things done and put away for the winter time. So I'm doing this today, even though the tree is not completely dormant. You can see that by the, the leaves on here. So that's what we want. We want a, a nice balance between the top and the bottom, and we want this tree to be dormant. Those are the two requirements. Some things that we're going to need is uh, pruning shears, because we're going to need to prune the top. We're also going to need some saws, and this saw is for pruning the tree. The, the branches, and then this saw here, which has been exposed to soil, is gonna be for pruning the roots and sawing down the soil, sawing down the roots. Um, you'll notice here what's gonna be the most interesting thing about this particular root pruning that I'm gonna do on this tree is that you can see there's a nice gap in between this trunk here and this trunk here. So we basically have two different trees. If I were to root prune this down the middle, which is what I'll do. I'm gonna root prune this exactly down the middle and put these two in smaller pots. That's the, that's the goal. Um, you know, these, this pot here is huge. It's a 30 gallon size pot. The pot that you guys are sitting on, or the camera is sitting on, is also a 30 gallon size pot. I have four of them. And I think they're great. I think getting them in larger sizes is fantastic. The problem with that is that I can't get this in the greenhouse. <laughs> I didn't realize that this thing was too big to actually move. First off, you need two people, two strong people to move this. And second, uh, it doesn't fit in my storage. It just doesn't actually get in there. I need a larger door, basically. So we're gonna be down potting this into a 15 gallon size, which is uh, about half of this. So if we cut this directly in half, that will kind of serve that purpose um, of putting each each half in a 15 gallon size container, which would be pretty cool, I think, when we're done. So I wanna show you guys how to root prune, but also how to prune the top to get a nice bounce, and that'll be the video. All right, so first off, we're gonna start out by using our saw and our pruning shears to prune this back. I think it's easier to work with if we kind of prune the top first. Uh, there's a huge jungle worth of tree here, so if we don't, kind of contain this a little bit, I think it's going to be a little bit more work. So that's what we're going to do. And you can see, obviously, we have two separate trees here. It's hard to imagine, I know, but with this section here, we'll do this one first. We're going to basically take out the middle growth, and that's it. So we can always come back and prune out more, but you can see here, we'll take this out here. Um, because that was growing into the, into the center. This is also growing into the center. So we'll prune this out. This is a very vigorous variety called raspberry latte. I have no doubt this thing will shoot out so many different shoots. But you know what, in a smaller pot, I think it's a lot easier to control. And that's one lesson I've learned with this variety. Uh, it probably needs a little bit more water. It's just very vigorous. So I think this side, we're pretty much done get some little detail pruning there we may come back and take out a couple of these shoots I'm not sure but you can see there's one two three here and then a third a fourth one down below that's not exactly what I want so you know it is what it is but we, this is a nice sized tree if you can imagine this standing up straight with this trunk centered so that you know the trees like this now um, it'll be a really nice shaped tree it really will and it should put out a lot of nice fruit for me next year. This side, I'm gonna come over here for you guys. This side is a huge mess. And the first thing I wanna do is take out this lower growth. This lower growth is completely useless. I promise you that. Again, we're gonna take out the growth that's coming out towards the center. this out as well. 
see how much see how much pruning we did here. It's quite a lot. And then I'm also going to take out this for sure. And at the bare minimum, that. Again, we can come back in here and do more detailed pruning. This growth here is not going to do. That's not going to do. Um, this huge branch here, we're going to take completely out. So you can kind of see it already. We've got branches going out this way, branches coming out this way, that way, and this way. So it's like a four corner square pattern, I guess, to my pruning. That's really all it was. We just want each you know, section of branches to go out in one corner of a square. Right? It's an easy way to put it. So now we're done our pruning. We actually didn't need this saw. It's nice to have it in case you uh, are working with two-year-old growth here. But we're going to come down in here. Actually, I left some growth down here at the bottom. Take this out. This tree loves to grow wild. It's a, it's a seedling tree, and the thing just puts out so many random growth points that controlling this thing is the best way to get it to fruit to its maximum potential. We're going to give it one more year. Um, you know, it still hasn't really proven itself to be a great variety here. It's a tasty variety raspberry latte, but it, uh, it has problems with the huge eye I think it has and it may have trouble with it dropping prematurely and not getting to the exact ripeness that I would like it. If I could get it to the exact ripeness that I like it, it's a phenomenal fig, without a doubt. So if you live in a warm climate, you should have this one for sure. Uh, but here's all of our things here, we'll put this to the side. And now we're really just gonna put this on its side. Because I need to get this out of the pot. That's the first step to this. So I can't think of a better way, but I may have to cut this pot and it really is gonna suck. But I'm not using a size pot like this probably ever again. So um, yeah, let's see if we can get this out without. This really is a two person job you're dealing with pots this big. All right. So, one thing I want to mention is that we did a root pruning video earlier this, this spring. So we did one now in the fall, one in the spring. I'm essentially root pruning the same trees again. What's sick and really cool is that we got all this growth, lots of fruit, even after root pruning in the spring, and look at all this root growth on the side. That's incredible. So now, we really are just gonna do this right dead in the center. Turn this, guys. location here.
All right, people, so there you have it. Split in half. You can see right here, this is where the, the trunk connected to the other trunk underground, under the soil. Here's a really huge root here that we had to get through. And now we have two really large trees. And in fact, I'm gonna do the same thing, not to the BMKK, because the black Madeira only has one trunk. Same thing with the Col de Dom Blanc. But we're gonna do this to the LSU Tiger. You can see there's two trunks here right next to each other. So I got that. I gotta do that one more time. But in normal circumstances, when we're root pruning these guys, uh, to refresh the cycle of roots, right? Because we want to keep these trees young and keep these trees alive. They only will live so long in a pot before they choke themselves out. So we wanna make sure that we're actually taking off a third of the roots. In this situation, we just cut them in half. What I may do when I put this put these uh, in their pot is I want to see how much room is in that pot. And if there's not a whole lot of room, I'm going to shave off the sides to make this into a perfect square. You can see how this one's kind of slanted like that. And then that way we'll get a really healthy tree next year. I won't have to root, root prune these trees for quite some time. Um, and we'll do the same thing to the BMKK and the Col de Dom Blanc. Uh, but the difference is we're not gonna cut them in half, okay? We're gonna basically shave them down to the point in which they'll fit in that 15 gallon size pot. And then we're going to uh, take off even more growth so that they have some new soil to grow in, new roots to grow. Uh, it really is going to be a nice little balance, but you really don't wanna take more than a third of the root ball away. Unless, of course, the tree is dormant and uh, you've pruned off the top to compensate. So those are the two keys, guys. We wanna make sure we're taking off a third, keeping a nice balance, and these trees are completely dormant. Anyway, this is pretty cool, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. How awesome, right? Let me stand these two up. Excuse me, let me stand these two up for you guys. So here's one tree. Taller than me. Oh, it's standing up on its own. And here's the other. We'll straighten out the trunks, guys. So when we put the uh, the soil, the this new root ball in its new pot, we'll tilt the trunk, and that way the trunk will be completely straight, and this will have a really nice form to it. But isn't that cool? Alright guys, take care.